start recording. Hello everyone and welcome to Handmade Hero, the show where we code a complete game live uh, from scratch on Twitch. No libraries, uh, no, no engines, uh, and um, <clears throat> we are kind of right in the thick of it right now doing some fairly interesting graphics coding actually. Uh, speaking of the from scratch stuff, we are working on uh, doing how we want to do lighting. And uh, we left off yesterday with a bug and the bug was actually solved, at least I'm 99% sure it's solved. I haven't actually tried, uh, checked it myself, but I'm 99% sure it's solved uh, on the forums um, by Slapped Silly username. Uh, so hats off to you for, for, I think, getting guessing what the bug actually was um, before we actually covered it on the stream. So without further ado, let's go talk about what the bug uh, was or is. Uh, and verify that that's actually true, and fix it. So uh, before I get started, uh, just a quick reminder, today is day uh, 103, so if you happen to have pre-ordered the game on handmadehero.org and you'd like to follow along, please go ahead and download the source code pack, the latest source code pack, and unzip uh, day 102 out of that pack. That will put you exactly where I am today, so you can follow along if that is something that you would like to do. Uh, so here is a quick synopsis Let's uh, first of all uh, remember what the bug actually was, I suppose, just so we can sort of, uh, you know, uh, bring everyone up to speed. So if you'll notice, uh, we're, we're doing a total debug view right now. So this is not the bug. This is a, a debugging view that we did. And what we did is we just started drawing where in our, uh, these are our maps here. Uh, this is one environment map. Uh, this is another environment map, right? And this one we're not using quite yet. But we had two sort of notions of an environment map, a top and a bottom. And what we found is that one of the maps appeared to be reflecting properly, or at least not obviously wrong when we implemented it, and the other one was not. And you can sort of see what's going on up here, actually. Uh, we ended up drawing where we were sampling from the map, which is kind of cool. And you can see that even though we were expecting to see a fairly blobby region like this, we actually got this very thin sliver and we have no idea why that was happening. We were like, this doesn't make sense. We checked things fairly carefully and they looked reasonable. Now, uh, what actually ended up happening, I'll sort of explain on the, on the uh, blackboard real quick, uh, if I can find, where is Mischief? Did Mischief go away? I feel like Mischief is gone. Wow, I don't know where Mischief went, but I guess we'll go ahead and, and bring it back up again. Somebody must have closed Mischief. I don't think it was me. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's, uh, let's talk about it. It's actually a very, very simple bug, assuming that it's correct uh, in what our sermonization was on the forums. Uh, but let's just talk quickly about what it was. So here on day 103, right? Basically, here's the deal. We already had a bug, essentially, about this. And it just didn't occur to me that we would essentially have another one. And that is uh, because the way we were computing our reflection map, right, is we were saying, well, let's suppose we're looking, oops, let's suppose this is a top-down view of the game, right? Uh, then we'll basically say, well, we've got a reflection map that essentially is, is you know, going to kind of line up with the screen, right? And we drew a checkerboard on it, right? So we kind of got this sort of thing. Um, so for testing, we've got that checkerboard on it. And what we want to do is we want to pretend, right, if we were to look at this uh, from the side in a sort of more, a little more um, perspective-y kind of way, so that just we can understand what's happening, just kind of see what's happening a little bit better. Uh, we wanted to pretend that if, if this was, say, the sky, right, up here, so here's the sky, right, checkerboard. If this was the sky, uh, and someone was down here, we want to cast up at it uh, and see where we hit so we know what we should be reflecting, right? And that's a pretty reasonable thing uh, to think of doing. We wrote the code for that. It seemed okay, uh, but we ended up having weird reflection patterns on one of our maps, and it was like, what's going on? Well, what we were doing, of course, is we were using the screen space UV. So like when we were drawing our sphere, we were using the screen space UV uh, of the sphere to figure out where to start the cast from. So if here was the sphere, we we're starting the cast at each point on the sphere, wherever it was on the screen, right? Which seems like a very sane thing to do. If you think about a sphere sitting here, 
uh, that's exactly what it should be, right? You want to start uh, from the 2D location, wherever it was on this plane, and cast upwards. Makes perfect sense. Problem is, just like before, we're not actually looking down on some sprites. So for example, uh, the trees and that sort of stuff, and the sphere, are like cards that are sort of sticking up out of the plane in terms of their perspective. And we see them flat on against the ground, even though they're sort of in this weird lean. And it's just a conceit of how 2D game art works that we allow that. It doesn't make any sense in terms of the perspective of the game, but that's just how we tend to do it when we do those isometric things. You know, normally if it was really any kind of re reasonable top-down perspective, they'd be much more tilted than they are. So since that was the case, as we move up on that card, like the base point, the actual location of the entity is correctly where we should start uh, sampling, but, and as we move left to right, our X coordinate is totally also correct, right? So starting the, the cast from the X coordinate off of the base is totally correct. The problem is when we move up and down, up and down actually corresponds to Z movement for sprite cards like this, not Y movement, right? It does not correspond to Y movement in any way. So we were pretending we were moving this way for casting when really we were just going straight up and down. And so the reflection we were getting was actually logical if somehow the, those normals, which are all pointing the other way, were somehow smushed onto a flat thing that was lying on the ground, which is a totally it can't happen, like normals couldn't be pointing that way on a thing that was flattened, right? It's as if you had a thing, you know, if we're standing here, this is the ground, and here's the card, all the normals are like pointing out of this thing, but now we're interpreting it as if it was flat here, so this normal is like here and pointing that way. It's just nonsense, right? Um, it's a nonsensical thing, which is why we were getting a reflection that looked just totally weird, right? So what would happen, of course, is the reason that we were getting the flip where the bottom half would be fine and the top half would, would not be is because that was what determined whether or not the reflection movement was going with the grain of motion up the, up the card or against it. And if it was going against it, it would tend to collapse the area of the reflection. If it was going with it, it would elongate. And that's why we have two. These are both wrong, I believe. It's just this one doesn't look that wrong, and it's hard for our eye to tell that it's wrong because, you know, humans aren't perfect. We can't just look at an arbitrary, weird checkerboard test pattern and be like, oh, that reflection doesn't look right. Like, maybe if we actually uh, were wearing, um, you know, uh, 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 Valve's 3D glasses and we're looking at a real scene, we could, like, look at it and go, yeah, that's that's not right. Like my intuition all works here and I can see the whole scene and I can tell that's wrong. Maybe that's true. But in a 2D perspective where things are already intentionally wrong because the art wants them to sort of uh, be different, there's no way for us to really see that error, I think. So I suspect both of these are actually incorrect. We just didn't quite focus on this one as being wrong. We, we had some no inclinations that maybe not everything was, was quite right, but uh, you know, there, there we have it. So that uh, is what we, uh, we need to fix starting now, right? And fortunately, I think that's not a particularly difficult fix. Uh, we just need to kind of do a little bit of futzing with uh, determining sort of what the base point, we just need some notion of what the base point of this card is so that we kind of know, all right, here's, here's our central cast point. Here's our X span, which is the same as it was before, uh, but then our Y will move us up and down in Z for these types of cards. That seems uh, like, a, like a pretty straightforward thing. Uh, I don't think it'll be too difficult to do, but that's what we gotta do. Uh, and so I think that will, will uh, fix our problem here, if that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> uh, because, and to be a little clearer about why that's the case, um, the reason we need that base point is we still do need to know where to start the cast from. Uh, so we still need to have some notion of where, you know, where in the world we're supposed to be casting from. And since we don't really know if this thing is like floating or what it's doing, we kind of want to have some notion that comes in from the game that says, hey, this is where this thing actually is in the world. 
uh, and here is how I want you to interpret its coordinates um, in terms of uh, in terms of casting. So we kind of need to get a little bit of a handle on that, right? All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and 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 get that started. Wait, I should already have an Emacs. It looks like I typed Emacs. Well, I guess I closed it down. I guess I closed it down before we started. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into Render Group here. Uh, and first of all, we can take a look at the offending notion. Um, Essentially, it's, it's the screen space uh, UV bit, right? The screen space UV that we pass to this guy uh, has to be corrected. And the way that we're doing that, as you can see, is we're just using the X and Y coordinates directly. And so what we want to do is we want to think more carefully uh, about exactly what we're doing there. First of all, we want to say that our Y coordinate um, is, is probably not something that we're actually ever going to use directly uh, based off of the inv height max, right? So really, uh, our y coordinate for screen space UV for cards uh, is going to be something like our, our fixed uh, cast y or something, right? Like that's just going to be some value. And then our y coordinate is actually going to be uh, not so much about where we are in, in y here. That's going to be actually more about uh, where we are in Y off of, of the axis. So it's actually the V coordinate that we actually care about, right? The V coordinate tells us how far up the card, that sort of sprite card, we actually were, right? Uh, and again, we're a little bit messed up right now because we haven't done a coordinate system finalization, but we're just going to assume that everything goes bottom up even though it doesn't uh, quite yet just so we can get the math right in here and then uh, very next thing we'll be doing next week will be the coordinate pass. Uh, so, you know, we should have everything be able to tighten everything up uh, at that point and make sure everything is totally kosher before doing any sort of optimization uh, work. So, uh, what we want to do here is take that screen space UV which we're passing, right? And now we want to essentially offset uh, the screen space UV if necessary. Now, we don't have really any need to offset the cast Y for cards. It's fixed. What we do want to do is offset the Z height of the thing uh, by whatever our V is times some height that we want the card to be in Z. Like how tall should this tree be, right? And that's what we'll use. So when we're down here, um, all we really have to do is say, okay, when we compute um, that uh, distance from map in Z, this is actually now gonna be based on V, right? So it's actually gonna be 2.0, right? Um, that's the distance uh, the map is, you know, in Z, let's say, right? Um, and in fact, I guess what we could do is say, let's, let's not actually, uh, well, I guess we could still do it this way. And then say, all right, depending on which one of these we are, uh, we can talk about how far away it is based on the motion that it actually gra gets. Uh, and I suppose actually we don't need to do that here. We can just add it in right here, right? So we want to do uh, height of, of card is a thing we want to do here where we want to say, okay, however far away the map was, as we move up the height of the card, right, uh, the distance of the map is either going to get smaller or greater depending on whether we're moving away from it or towards it. Now, the map distance from map in Z is going to be negative on the bottom, right? Uh, so as the, the, uh, the height of card, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as, uh, as we move, we just have to figure out, um, I should do this on the, on the blackboard, sorry. Uh, we just have to figure out a, a good way of making sure that we always get the sign right. So the way that we have it right now, right, is if we're talking about the top guy or the bottom guy, uh, this will either be negative, right, or positive, uh, depending on which one it is. So as we move up the card in, in V, right, um, and I suppose, you know what, V is not really 100% correct either, now that I think about it, because we could be rotating. And so really what we want to do is figure out the, the direction this way that we are up off of, of the base right? Um, whatever that base point actually is, or if that's the center point here or something like this, right? What we really want to do is, is find that, right? Um, so I guess now that I think about it, uh, I, was, I, was, I was off. I was off. I was not correct. This is not going to be fixed cast Y. It will be 
this. The difference is just that it's going to be... Um, I'm sorry, uh, my bad. That's not what I meant. Uh, <laughs> I meant the Z. Uh, the difference is it will still be that value. It will still be um, sort of the, the Z difference will still be based on the Y. Uh, it's just going to be based on the Y's difference from whatever some fixed point is uh, in space, right? Meaning we don't know exactly how we want to measure it, um, but I guess it probably should be from the origin of the coordinate system, right? So if this is the origin of the coordinate system, let's say. What we want to do is say, all right, we're going to tell you the, the thing that's doing the rend that's like issuing these rendering commands, the game, is going to say this is at this particular z height. I'm telling you that. And furthermore, I'm telling you uh, how far in z I want you to go, how, how, what the height in meters actually is. And, and we could actually have this be a constant thing, which is like a y um, to meters conversion that basically just tells us, OK, as we move in y, how many, you know, and, and meters to pixels is probably a good uh, approximation of it, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're basically saying the inverse of that. However many pixels we go up, we want to know how many meters we actually moved, and that would be how far off of that base z height we were, right? Um, so we, I, I misspoke when I said we don't need that value anymore. We do need that value. Uh, we just need to know what it actually is relative to the origin of our coordinate system. Uh, which we need to figure out, right? So the origin of our coordinate system is this guy. Uh, so what we want to do is say, all right, the origin's y. We subtract that away, and now we've got our delta. This is now our z difference. It's whatever uh, we we invert here. This is our uh, this is our z difference. This would be um, this would be in pixels. So really, instead of in height max, we just need something that's kind of like got that uh, that conversion factor built in, right? So we want a pixels to meters here that will turn this z diff into something that is, approx is, is in actual world space, right? So then once we get to distance from map in z, we're not using that, we're using z diff like so. <coughs> and now we just have to get back to the sign thing. So sorry, I totally misspoke there when I said it. We don't care about v. v would be rotating around and not giving us a reliable value. So we actually want to know, uh, we actually do want to know that y pixels. OK, so back to here. We've got our z value, whatever our z uh, base value actually is. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in, that's actually something that we probably want to, to bake in here as well. So distance from map in z being 2, like this is something we probably should actually parameterize. In fact, we could actually do something like, um, you know, uh, what is the, uh, the, the origin z kind of a thing, whatever our origin z value actually is. The distance uh, from the map is actually going to be uh, is actually going to be based on that in some sense. Like, I'm trying to think of how to explain this. Since at the moment this distance from map in Z is totally relative to some imaginary thing, um, we couldn't do something like say we've got these two uh, maps, like we've got the top and the bottom map, right? We can't do something like say we've got the floating head and it's up here so it should be reflecting close to the top and we've got some ball sitting on the ground and it should be reflecting close to the bottom, right? There's no information about that. There's no information about the relative height of the sprites, right? So what we kind of want to do I think is turn this into a little bit more sane equation first, which is to say let's first compute where we are in Z. Uh, so this is just our z, like this is our, our z position, right? And our z position would be like some origin z value that we're saying is where we're starting at, right? Um, and that origin z value uh, is going to uh, be modified by this, the z diff, right? So it's actually going to be, it's going to be doing this sort of thing. Uh, so whatever our origin z is, we're going to modify that by the z diff. So we'd be going like up, uh, you know, if it's if we're getting higher or down, if we're getting lower. That's our pz. And then instead of doing distance from map in z, we would just do something like map z, right? Which is like where the map actually is. And what we could do for that to make things much cleaner, I think, is just say uh, this is the map's location in z, right? Like this is where it actually is. So then we don't actually have to deal with any of this stuff. We can just say, okay, the distance from the map in Z, 
<clears throat> uh, is just going to be, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is just going to be uh, entirely based on subtracting the two values just like we would do in any other vector situation. Uh, so like the far map, uh, if we've got one, right, we just go ahead and take the far map z uh, wherever that is in z and we say, okay, to get to the map you would go uh, from where we are in z to that, right? And then it'll automatically be negative or positive based on whichever way the map was to us and since we're picking which one it is based on the normal direction, it should all work out okay for us, right? Uh, so I think that's a little bit saner uh, to start with. Let's go ahead. We've got a bunch of stuff we got to clean up now. Uh, so, so there's that. Uh, but yeah. So what we want to do is say, I guess we want to, I suppose we could probably just assume that our fixed cast position, I think we want to pass this in eventually. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that our fixed pass cast position is, uh, is, is going to be at the origin of, of our thing for now, but that's probably not what we want to do. We're going to need more control over these things eventually. And so we'll have to think through how we want them all specified. Uh, but for now, we can just go ahead and, and assume that it's at the origin. Uh, so this will need uh, to be specified uh, separately. Uh, so for right now, we could say that, uh, you know, origin Z, we could say that that was just at, at zero for now, let's, or something like this. Um, or, you know, or one, I don't even know, uh, 0 0.5, who knows. Uh, so we could say whatever we want to say for origin Z, uh, and then we can also for our, uh, our, our fixed uh, cast Y. Our fixed cast Y position could just be uh, whatever that initial origin is, uh, wherever, wherever the origin Y actually happens to be, uh, like so. Uh, and so that can, be, um, that can be computed down here after we have those values, uh, like so. Uh, and then our pixels to meters, I feel like pixels to meters uh, is something that we normally do have uh, in terms of uh, rendering information, right? Uh, we have meters, meters to pixels, so we could easily uh, do pixels to meters here. So I'll go ahead and pass uh, meters to pixels, or sorry, pixels to meters, right? Like so. Uh, and then here we can just pass one over uh, <clears throat> our uh, group meters to pixels. Uh, what do we actually call it here? It is render group. Render group. Okay, uh, so we're not quite there yet. We're getting there. Uh, but uh, we also now, when we actually make those maps, we have to say where we want the maps to be. So we, you know, uh, when we're actually sort of producing them, we have to sort of give them a height in the world that says where the map uh, should exist. So when we're doing this, uh, this uh, setting them up here, when we're actually drawing into them, uh, we can also take a second and say that the trans state uh, env maps, right, for each map, uh, and I think we actually said which, which uh, ones they are here. So zero is bottom. Uh, so, you know, our, our bottom map is gonna be temporarily at, at, at that. Uh, maybe we'll do uh, that sort of a thing, and this will be like the sky will be maybe two meters above us. I don't know. Uh, it's just a, an example. Oops, PZ, like so. And that'll just say where the, we want those maps to be for now. Uh, so there we go. Uh, and then we have to, uh, well, I guess we got, a, we got a couple different things we might want to do. But for the moment, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see, let's keep, uh, keep taking a look at this stuff here. Uh, so, looking at where we are casting right now, um, yeah, I couldn't, unfortunately, I'm going to say I don't necessarily know exactly uh, what I think should be happening on these, so I don't even know how close that is yet. Uh, it's a little confusing to say the least, um, but I would like to go through the code once before we actually do any more work on it anyway, uh, but I just kind of wanted to see where we were at uh, on, on that. So uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and let that lie for now, <laughs> um, if, if, if that's okay with you guys. Uh, so all right, 
going back up here, and also we can uh, we can probably take our, our sample stuff uh, and and turn it off for, for a second just so we can kind of uh, see what the result is. So here is our little uh, thing that um, uh, you know if you want to see uh, turn this on to see where in the map you are sampling. There we go. Okay. Um, so there's our our new reflective sphere, right? Um, and I would say that at least it's looking a little saner now, but I still think our our top reflection is probably still uh, a little borked, although it's hard to say, obviously. Our top reflection is actually our bottom reflection, I think, technically, right? Um, however you want to think about that. But uh, either way, um, well, that's kind of interesting. That is really bizarre how that's looking, actually. Huh. Sorry, I'm just a little bit mesmerized by that. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I mean, like I said, I still think we've got a little bit of work to do to make sure that all of the changes that I made are actually correct here. Um, but I think we're getting there. All right, so let's go through this step by step. So at the moment, we're essentially saying that everything, no matter where it is in the world, uh, it's just going to come in at the origin Z uh, of, of 0.5. So it's like halfway, you know, it's always halfway in between uh, the two maps. That's just where it's going to be. Or I guess it's not quite halfway in between the two maps. I could, for now, set it to halfway just so we can kind of see if they're similar. So this would be halfway in between the two maps, right? Um, and uh, they are quite quite similar now. So that's actually that's actually definitely an improvement uh, from where we were. Similarly, uh, I suppose we could we could uh, go ahead and, and do it this way for testing. At the moment, we could say this was at you know the similar values to what we were using before, um, and then we can sort of see uh, what those look like. Right there's our uh, there's our we're at zero, and then we have a map that's negative two below us, negative two meters, and then two meters above us, basically. Uh, and if you look at what happens there, it's actually you know it's actually somewhat reasonable. You know, not too bad. Um, again, not. Not sure about it, but it's it's much more sane, I think, than we were getting. Uh, so let's keep going. So we're specifying origin Z, and now like we're two away on either one of these, we're saying. Uh, and the fixed cast location in Y is just going to be wherever the origin of the thing was. So that's like whichever one of these corridors is the origin. And, and we could uh, actually figure out which one that was, right? We could say draw rectangle outline. Uh, we could actually... Uh, Oh, you know what we could do? Let's say for now that the origin is actually the middle, because that would be a fairer thing in terms of how we are comparing our stuff. So what I'll do is I'll say the fixed cast Y is actually going to be uh, the origin um, plus the X axis plus the Y axis in half amounts, right? So sort of like go to the center of this thing, uh, and that's actually going to be uh, that cast uh, location, right? Uh, so now we should be, the middle should be sort of, uh, of, of this guy should be where we're thinking uh, the, we, we are actually casting from. Hopefully, that's the goal anyway. So that's our fixed cast location. That's where we are in terms of, of moving around on the bitmap. Uh, and in terms of, of taking a look at that, we can take that out of the equation if we want to, right? We can always say that the screen space UV just equals 0 0.5, 0 0.5 if we wanted to make it be in the center, um, for example, right? Uh, if we just wanted to say it doesn't actually matter where it moves to, oops. There. Uh, and so, you know, if we are in that circumstance, then since we have a spherical normal map, what we would expect is not to see any changes uh, at all, um, except in, you know, these, these outer regions here. And that is what we see. Uh, for the most part, although well, there's a little... Okay, so there's definitely some changing going on there. So that seems sort of wrong 
to me, although I guess, no, I think that, so that I think bears inspection. So if we are not moving the screen space UV, and since it is spherical, I would like to know why we are getting that change. Let's stop the displacement as well um, and take a look at that disp. Uh, so if we stop the displacement, like so, uh, oh, well, I guess we'll do it this way. So if we stop the displacement and leave it in the center, right? Um, so now we know that there's literally nothing happening except the rotation. We can definitely see changes in these guys, which we should not be seeing, right? Uh, so let's just tr let's take a minute and track that down because that's definitely, I believe, a bug uh, that should not be happening. Uh, but let's keep so let's keep walking through this and see if we can't figure out what's going on there. Uh, so we've got our pixels to meters, uh, and in fact, this now should always be the same as well. And so uh, the difference between these two things should be should should not there should be none right um, between those two things. Yeah, and it seems like that's relatively correct, right? Like. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different because the location isn't quite exactly the same. Uh, ah, well, I guess I should say the screen space UV has to actually move across the face of the thing. So this is not actually a fair test now that I think about it. I do, I, I am not sure though why the rotation is causing that thing, but now that I think about it, that's really not a fair test because we have to vary over the face of it. It's only this, the center of the thing uh, that wouldn't have to change. Uh, but anyway, so since we're staying in, this is actually the fairer test, staying in one place and making sure that the sphere does not change as it rotates. Um, and uh, that looks pretty good. Uh, let me verify, it's, it's rotating rather slowly. So what I might wanna do here is just kind of uh, speed up the rotation a little bit uh, so that we can get um, you know, a little clearer picture of what's going on. I'd also like to maybe move this down so these things are, are, are nearer to each other. There we go. So the rotation is right here. Uh, and so what I wanna do is speed this up a bunch just so we can see if there's anything, oops if there's anything going on there. Okay, so we're still, you can still see that we are actually warping, right, as we rotate. And I feel like we should be able to get it down to where we're not having that happen. Um, you know, I don't know if maybe our normal transform isn't quite right yet or whatever's going on, but there's, so I think we've got some work to do. All right, so fixed in place, uh, and, and you know what, I can also turn back on our sampler um, because then we can see what's happening to the shape, uh, which will help us potentially debug it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, like so. Yeah. So we're oscillating. We're actually changing who is who is large and who is small in terms of our sampling there, which is kind of bizarre. Uh, but let's so let's work through it. So we come down here. We're doing our normal sampling, like so. Um, and I suppose one thing we could do, we did this before that would kind of be helpful here, is let's uh, see what that bounce direction actually looks like. Uh, so after here, after we do that, let me just romp over uh, the Texel RGB uh, with actually uh, the bounce direction. So we'll just do a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 uh, times the bounce direction. And, uh, oops, times 0 0.5 times bounce direction. Do that, that way, plus. Uh, let's just take a look at that and see. Um, it looks pretty stable to me. Like, I don't see, there's a little fluctuation in there, I guess. Uh, 
but I feel like it's pretty stable, right? I mean, there's not, the outside obviously is, is changing, but I feel like the inside is, is staying relatively stable. And, you know, we could also, uh, if we wanted to, actually go ahead and make a, um, a version of this uh, where uh, we have that sort of, uh, that test. Um, let's see where it is here. Uh, we've got um, test diffuse. So test diffuse, oops, test diffuse, um, where we actually make that uh, test diffuse. Uh, what we could do is go ahead and actually uh, make test diffuse also be a sphere. Uh, so we could say make sphere diffuse map as well and make test diffuse uh, like so. Um, and that might actually be interesting uh, as well, right? And so if I go up to make sphere normal map, uh, if I was to take this function and just make another test function here, which is like make sphere diffuse map, uh, then what I could do, I'll get rid of the rust, oops, I'll get rid of the roughness coefficient, make sphere diffuse map. Uh, essentially exactly the same code, but the only uh, difference here is in the diffuse map, we'll actually put in an alpha channel uh, that will allow us to determine where, where the sphere actually is, right? Uh, so if we go ahead and uh, take a look at this, we could just say, uh, use this root term thing, uh, and and know which one we want, right? Uh, so all we need to do here is say that we've got uh, essentially a color. We've got the color X, uh, color Y, color Z, and that's always going to be, um, actually, I guess this is a base color or something like that. Okay, uh, we'll have the base color will be white. And this keyboard's driving me nuts. Uh, I had to send my, uh, as you know from yesterday's stream, I had to send my, my actual keyboard off to get RMA'd. Uh, they don't make them like they used to. Uh, anyway, and this value will actually just be the alpha. And so what I want to do is I want to compute the alpha here. And we'll just do it in a very simple way. We won't actually do coverage at the moment. What we'll do is we'll say, all right, uh, get rid of the, the normal term. Uh, and instead what we'll do is say, all right, whatever, uh, you know, I guess we don't, NZ, I don't even know why that was defined up in there. Uh, when we actually do this, if the root term is greater than zero, then the alpha will be 1.0. Otherwise, the alpha will be zero. I guess it's already zero, so that's fine. Uh, and that'll allow us to do a map that kind of clips uh, the sort that those sort of bogus normals out of the way for us, right? Uh, so if we, if we go ahead and rerun this now, uh, ooh. Uh, oh, right, and uh, we got to pre-multiply that as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that into account. So the alpha value needs 255, 0.5 uh, times alpha, right? Uh, and we also need to go ahead and multiply this by alpha so that it's pre-multiplied alpha since we're pre-multiplied alpha everywhere at the moment. I think that should be correct. That is definitely not correct. What did I do wrong there? Make sure diffuse map, uh, either the alpha zero or one, uh, the color is going to be, um, that looks totally, that's not right. I'm asleep, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep at the switch today, people. Let's be honest, it's just not, it's just not fabulous. Um, so, uh, that looks, oops, more like it, uh, there we go, and since alpha is just going to be 255 or 0, basically, uh, through there, we could also multiply the alpha by 255 on the way in, which would do that uh, automatically for us, so we can just do this, uh, and then that should take care of it automatically, right? Um, like so. Uh, so that seems good, right? Alpha times. And let's give it another go. Okay. Uh, so we now 
just need to make sure this actually doesn't overwrite it. I'm assuming it doesn't. Texel RGB. So we would just need to do Texel RGB where pre-multiplied alpha again. So we just need to multiply by A and that should just work. There's our sphere. That was harder than it should have been if I wasn't asleep today. That would have gone quicker, but either way, it's okay. Uh, so we can kind of see here, I feel like it's pretty easy to verify that our bounce direction does not appear to be changing. Am I correct? Like I don't see the bounce direction looks fairly constant, certainly not varying enough to make this difference happen, right? Uh, so I feel like that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and say if zero out on here. Um, this is draws the bounce direction. Uh, so what else we got? What else is actually plausible uh, to, you know, to actually be changing? If the bounce direction computation is not changing, what is changing? Uh, so there's the PZ value, right? Which is the origin uh, Z plus the diff Z. Um, there is the screen space UV, um, but that should be relatively constant now across the surface. So I do wonder about, let's go take a look at that Z diff and just see what that looks like uh, at the moment. So what if we take the Z diff out of the equation uh, for a minute? Uh, then it's constant. So that's what we want to see. Uh, so if we, just, if we just take a look at that for a second, I feel like that indicates to me, at least to some degree, um, that uh, the Z diff is, is bogus. And so the question is, why are we getting such, a erroneous, um, such an erroneous computation uh, of our Z diff there? And so I guess now that I think about it, that's actually the way it would work if it was based off of the origin of the coordinate system, because as it spins, you're going to have more of it going below. So that's actually, that's actually sort of right, right? Um, and probably means we don't really want to specify it this way going forwards. But if you think about what that means, you know, if I've got this and this is my origin and I'm saying that this is at zero, if I then rotate down like so, um, even if I move this up to account, to account for it and try to put it in exactly the same place so the spheres are overlaid, this point on the sphere is now considered to be lower because it's lower than the origin point as opposed to here where it was higher than it. Um, so that may indicate that we don't really want to do it that way so that rotating things don't have to counter themselves. I'm not sure exactly how we want that uh, to work. Uh, but what we could say is, you know, we've got this, this thing here we could say um, we have an origin y, um, you know, that is, that's this sort of a deal, right? If that's our origin y, um, like so, uh, then we could, that's not very capitalized, is it? Uh, then we could imagine this being um, a little saner there. Let me, let me just to verify that, I feel like. So if we were to use that value, now it's at the center of the sphere and that is going to be consistent across the rotation, right? Uh, so if we do this uh, and, uh, let's see, there we go. Uh, so there it's constant again as we're rotating around. So that's remaining constant, uh, like exactly like we expect that it should be. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn off the sampling uh, overdraw for the moment as well. Uh, and so hopefully that will get us back to, to something reasonable. Oh, and we're gonna have to make our sphere dark enough to be able to see uh, what we actually contribute in terms of lighting, right? Because um, right now it's full bright, so the light can't actually add anything to it. Uh, so our diffuse map should probably start uh, with a base color uh, that's dark. In fact, we could just make it 
Um, well, no, let's, let's make it, well, if we're doing lighting, we'll make it black just so we can see, uh, you know, the perfect reflection on it. It's just all, it's all light uh, that's incoming. Uh, so there we go. There's our sphere, which is nice and stable at the moment. Um, yeah, looking much, much better. Uh, we probably still have a little ways to go, but at least we're looking much better. So let's go ahead uh, and allow it to move around again. We'll take a look at that disc. Uh, we'll let disc kick back in. Uh, so there's our sphere that's moving around. And that's a very plausible, that now looks very plausibly like what should happen to the reflection during motion. So the only thing that I think is a little potentially broken right now is I feel like the reflection shape is a little odd uh, and should be more curved, uh, but we'll have to think about that a little bit. So anyway, that's um, the primary thing that I'm thinking of when I'm just looking at that there in terms of uh, other bugs that we may want to look at. We also have the bilinear sampling at the edge that's causing little sparklies. I'm not sure what we really want to do about that because that may not actually be a problem because if we uh, if we actually properly set those to be sort of uh, blurred for bilinear sampling, something we'll talk about a little bit later um, in the stream in the series, that may actually not be a problem. But we're getting pretty good. Uh, it's getting more, certainly getting more marble-like at the moment, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm liking the way that's looking. It's very nice and stable. I don't see a lot of bugs in there. So I think the only thing we really want to verify is that that reflection shape is not wrong. Um, but I think we're, we're just about there. So with that, uh, we'll leave that, we'll leave that where it's at, I guess. Uh, and we will go to the Q and A. D7 Samurai, the reflection is inverted. The edge should be the center and vice versa. And, and Garlando Bloom thinks as well. Yeah, me too. I mean, I just, I feel like it should be reflected this way, right? It should bow, it should bow inward. Um, and so I'm assuming we've got one more math bug in there, but I think we're pretty close. It looks much more nice and stable now. And, and, and so I think we're, I think we're just about there. Uh, I guess in the Q and A, if, if nobody has any cues, we can go uh, continue to pursue it. We could go take a take a look at the math now and, and see what we've got. Uh, Technorath, how long do you anticipate it will take before we get into more game designy type topics, rather than building up the engine? Uh, so if you're if you're interested in game design, this is not really going to be the stream for you. I am not a game designer. Uh, and so we won't really ever be doing game design type topics, if that makes sense. Uh, we will only be doing game implementation. So we're only, uh, you know, we're only doing, um, we're only doing uh, <clears throat> engine implementations, these sorts of things and game implementation, but we're doing implementation, not design. Oh, Stellar7, you know what? You're right. We do have 12 minutes left of normal stream time because we started 12 minutes late. So let's just use some more of the Q&A. Let's use a little bit more of the Q&A uh, to, since, since I am of the opinion that it's bowing the wrong way or potentially bowing the wrong way, and other people are as well, let's just go ahead and take a look uh, and, and, and take, take a look and see uh, if that's actually uh, correct in there, right? Um, so, I guess the first thing to think about is why does that actually happen um, on a real sphere, right? The reason that that would happen is because as the reflection gets more up this way, uh, Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. I have to think about because it's we're doing something a little strange here, which is because we're doing the feathering, uh, this sort of feathering stuff. It makes it a little harder to think about exactly how it's supposed to work. I do wonder a little bit about how much that interferes uh, with what we're doing. Hmm. Hmm. Well, either way. Um, because you'll notice it's really the feathering. I, I, it's the feathering that creates that pattern, right? And so I feel like what we're really seeing there is actually this, this, a result of this calculation, right? Because, so, so hear me out on this one, guys. Um, uh, you know, I, I just like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like I need, I need you to think of me as the man now dog just for a second here, uh, if I may. So if I, I'm gonna stop the disc. The bowing is going the correct direction. The reflection goes the right direction. It's the feathering that is curved this way. And the reason that the feathering is curved this way is just because we're using the magnitude um, of that bounce direction, y, to determine which way, how we feather the edge. So if we were to take off the edge feather, right, um, so instead of TFAR map, we just always said, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's 1.0 or whatever, right? Like this. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of see that it's really just, that's, that shape that we're seeing there is the shape of this test, right? It's saying when the, it's, it's the test of the bounce directions Y component. Um, so maybe the answer there is we want to do a different test if we want the shape to be different because the actual reflection looks like it's curved the right way. You know what I mean? Like the reflection's actually curving this way, not that way. Um, the actual lines that are reflected. Uh, so I feel like that bodes well. Uh, for the calculation. Uh, how do people feel about that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so that's just that's just like the frisket where it's actually doing kind of uh, the sort of the the blending on there. So yeah, I don't know, and that's just that's that's sort of what I'm thinking. I do wonder, I feel like it goes it doesn't quite dim as gradually as I might have expected. So I also feel like perhaps that T far map value might want to uh, sort of be accentuated, right? You know what I mean? Like uh, something where it's gonna be a more gradual. So I don't know if you saw what I did there. Like, you know, if you want to make a value ramp more quickly, uh, when you square it like that, you can, you can make its fall off be much more hard, right? Um, basically what happens in that range, because remember, we're always talking about things uh, that are sort of in that range um, where you've got, you know, uh, a zero to one thing. And so if you, th if you have a fall off, you know, that's going like this. Uh, so you're talking about, uh, you know, and I guess I, sorry, it's a fall off. So I guess technically it's going like that, right? Uh, so you're talking about like as this value goes up, uh, you know, or to down, however you want to imagine it going. Um, if it's between zero and one, if you take whatever the output value of the thing is and you square it, it's always going to produce a more bowing effect, like however many times you square it, right? Because since all the values are less than one, one times one is one. And anything less than one, like 0.7 or whatever, times 0.7, right? I guess I'll just write them squared. One squared is one, right? And anything less than one, like 0.7 squared or whatever, is going to be equal to something less than its original value. 
because 1 times 0.7 will be equal to 0.7. Anything less than 1 times 0.7 is a fraction of 0.7. So squaring always accentuates those curves, whereas square rooting lofts them up, right? It's sort of like the gamma stuff we were doing. Uh, and so that's perhaps more of a, a reflection pattern, but yeah. D7 Samurai, my guess is that the normals at the edges are now pointing straight up while the normals at the center are pointing sideways. So the normals at the edges are now pointing straight up while the normals... I'm not sure I follow you. I mean, I guess the part that I don't understand now is what about that reflection looks wrong? It looks... that, ref, that actually looks correct, right? I mean, if there was something here that's how I would expect it to curve. It was only the fact that the frisketing, which is a totally not reflected, it has nothing to do with reflection at all, right? Uh, the frisketing is just a thing that's on there to make it so that we gradually change between different reflection maps. Um, so, and I don't know if we don't want that curve. I'm not sure we don't though. I'm not sure that that's a bad thing having that curve. Um, because then obviously this, is, this, this middle area here is all gonna fill in with other reflection stuff, right? Move it and then it looks wrong, Garlando Bloom says. So left to right motion obviously looks correct to me, right? I mean, that looks pretty, pretty sensible. And up and down movement, I mean, I think part of the problem there is since we don't have the coordinate system for up and down quite yet, the maps are, are not probably doing exactly the thing that you would expect them to do necessarily in terms of which direction we're moving. Um, but that looks correct as well, right? I mean, that's what it should do. It should move, you know, I mean, you have to imagine you're moving it essentially through uh, you know, you're, you're moving it essentially as if this was moving on top of it, right? So where the walls are, is they're like here and here on the sphere, right? Which is the weird thing, the super crazy weird thing about... Uh, yeah, about, about this. We could create a sphere that does a different thing, right? If we wanted to, we could create uh, a sphere that has the normals rotated. Uh, so for example, if we did in make sphere normal map uh, and we wanted to make it so that it was a top facing sphere essentially, uh, if we wanted to do that, then we'd only see one thing reflected, right? We'd see the top thing re reflected. Um, so if we wanted to make a sphere normal map that way, what we would do instead is in here, we would actually swap these, right? So it would actually be this way. And that's for a thing that's lying down and, and pointing up at the ceiling, right? Um, but we can't quite do that yet because we're not, we're not actually, we don't have a way to do, um, we don't actually have a way to do that yet because we, we would have to do the math differently for the for the z instead now the z diff is wrong right so we basically have to add two paths like i said to the normal thing one for stuff that's lying down where the pixel motion corresponds to actual motion in screen space uv right so you know uh we could almost we could prototype it in here right it would be um it would be like this if uh card, then do it that way, um, <clears throat> like so. Otherwise, the z diff is always zero, right? There's no z diff at all. Uh, and the screen space 
u and v is the previous one that we calculated, right? And uh, inv height max. So that's what that would look like, right? Uh, and similarly, we would end up going, uh, well, let's, let's go ahead and recompile this here, right? Uh, similarly to that, we also need to take what happens in here Uh, and when we do this reflection, uh, that's correct. We get the reflection out of that. Um, we would take the bounce direction Y. So yeah, is that correct? I have to think, this is why I say we have to do the coordinate system pass because we have to then go through now and actually make sure we have all of the coordinate system stuff correct. That's, that's a little, that's, <laughs> that's not quite right. Um, yeah, I feel like we need to actually spend time to get that quite right. There's, cause there's a couple other things in here that wouldn't be correct uh, about how the bounce is being uh, calculated for things that are lying down um, as opposed to, to pointing up, right? Um, and so we can, we can kind of, uh, play with that next week when we do the coordinate system stuff and we can do one that's that's kind of flat on itself reflect Casey face um Star 7, it feels like the red and blue should swap places. Uh, yeah, so they will. That's the, that's the y, up and, y up versus Y down thing. Like I said, that will get fixed next week. Can we make the checkerboard a bit tighter? Sure. I think all we would have to do to make the checkerboard a bit tighter uh, is change where the maps are. Um, so if we wanted to, we could do... Uh, making them further away so they can be reflected more uh, exacerbated. I, I, can, I can make them as, as far away as you want there. Uh, I don't know if that helps at all. So. And that, that, really looks, that really looks pretty right to me. I mean, maybe we've got still some bugs in there, but that looks really correct to me. Again, the frisketing is a separate effect. That is not part of our reflection math. The frisketing effect is so that we can blend three normal maps to three environment maps together that have nothing to do with each other, right? Um, it's purely synthetic. Andy SC, do you only want to support standing cards and lying cards or also any other angle? I think just standing and lying down. And I don't even know if we want that. We may only really want this, this shape, but I feel like we should work it out to have both just in case while we're on it. Cause it's not much work to, when we're actually going through and making, cleaning up the coordinate system, I feel like it should be really easy. So. But yeah, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that that's correct now. I think, I think that's right. Um, that, that looks right to me. So we do need to, the blue and the red should swap, but that's a Y uh, up down problem. So that'll get taken care of uh, next week when we do the coordinate stuff. But And also, uh, Grumpy Giant, it's definitely not sitting on the floor at all, right? Uh, because it's eight units away, and it is not eight units tall. Um, so, so it's definitely, yeah, this is, this is a hovering. It's like, that's a sky and a ground that are far, that are, I mean, they're not far away, but they're not right up against it, right? 
Um, and we can certainly make it closer, but then you can't see much of the checkerboard, right? Um, you know, if it's, if it's, we don't get much of, of the checkerboard at that point. Um, and again, we've got, we can affect that factor too, right? Like we have, there's other aspects of it that we haven't really addressed yet um, because we don't really know how big these maps are in world space. And this is why I say we really kind of want, like, you know, like UVs per meter, for example. Um, we, need, we need other stuff here. It, it, that, that's a fudge factor that we don't actually know what that should be. So, you know, if a thing was one unit away, maybe it should actually look more like, you know, that or something, right? Um, I don't know. Right, I have no idea what the actual uh, values here should be, and that's again why I say maybe coordinate system work uh, maybe should be happening here, just so we can kind of uh, figure out what uh, what we want to say for all of these values. So you know, there's a there's another example, right, um, of the checkerboard being reflected at a at a much more a much less a much less it's assuming that the checkerboards are much, much, much larger than we were assuming them to be, right? Um, if that makes any sense. I don't know if it does or not, uh, but there you go. And I feel like it's also sort of a, a little bit intersecting there. So I feel like this, um, uh, where is render handmade, let's see, um, PZ. So I feel like we may, I don't, uh, I didn't go actually calculate how far things should be. So, you know, that's, that's kind of more what the, what a large checkerboard would look like, right? I don't know if that looks better to people or not. Right. So again, those values just aren't, we, we have to do some work now when we go through and do coordinate system stuff to really determine what all these values should be like how big is the environment map in world space so that we map the units properly and all that sort of thing right so yeah so we'll actually work out what these values are actually supposed to be. I mean, we'll, we'll actually, this, will, this is not an unknown value. We know what it is, we just haven't worked it out. It's gonna be based on how much area we want to capture for our lighting, right? It's going to be based on how dense the map is versus that, right? And so we'll, we'll have, you know, um, we'll, we'll have that, dialed when we when we go through it next week so yeah so uh yeah pretty happy with how that's going Any more questions? Looks like no more questions, maybe. Maybe. All right. All right. So I'm pretty happy with where we got here. Um, and like I said, it's crazy. This is ridiculous how fast this is running for such sloppy code that we've done. I mean, we were just literally, it's all just kind of like the code to figure out how to make all the math work the way we wanted it to. It's crazy how fast that's running. So I guess that bodes well for software rendering. Uh, I mean, as a simple example, right, if you just, even with the same code, 
This machine has something like 16 cores or something in it. It's got crazy number of cores. On this machine anyway, if we just, uh, I'm sorry, not 16 cores, 12 cores. If we something, if we just took exactly this thing and broke the screen up into 12 regions, it would run 12 times faster, right? Um, so we can already, just by, by having a separate thread render each uh, tile on the screen, we would, we would basically get, you know, something like 12 times faster. Uh, and so I, I feel like we're probably actually going to be able to do a software renderer for this game that you could actually play, um, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, even though we were only really doing it for educational purposes, I feel like we may actually, it could actually be something that was, you could ship. I don't think we want to because the resolution will be lower, right? You, you know, you'll want, you'll want to run it on, a G, on the GPU path because you'll get a higher res um, play screen, but you know. And Miblo, this is not, this is completely unoptimized, essentially. The only optimization that, that this is going through is the compiler's optimizations. Um, so, like, we will, when we simdize it, we should get at least four times faster, I should think. Um, well, not at least four times faster, uh, I guess, because this is, this machine could only get four times faster because it doesn't have the eight wide instructions. Um, but it'll get four times faster on this machine, potentially up to four times faster with that, and also 12 times faster on top of that from the threading. So we've got, a, we've got headroom of, you know, somewhere in the 50 times faster than we currently are. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of crazy. I feel, like, I feel like we may actually be able to do some, uh, we may actually be able to have a software under this that's playable which I wasn't necessarily ex ex accounting on, right? So. Lori Poikin, no, this is not threaded at all. It's literally just completely unthreaded, unoptimized code, which has compiler optimizations turned on, but compiler optimizations aren't doing much of the stuff that we would, we would do, so. All right, um, so yeah, I think that's a good place to let leave off. I feel like we're, I feel like we're in pretty good shape here. Um, I'm really liking where this is going. So <clears throat> let's kill it for today. And I guess next week we will start on the path of, uh, we got two major things to do before we can start to nail down the render. One, clean up the coordinate systems and get all of that stuff straightened out before we go any further. And then the other thing we need to do is figure out how we're gonna do that near field light. Uh, basically, this, this, this green dude, uh, I do not know how we're gonna do the green dude. Um, the green dude is tough. The green dude is tough. Um, so yeah. I don't know how we're going to do the green dude. But basically what, you know, if you take a look at what we've got here, right? You can see that this will get us a nice, we can basically put a nice sky, uh, reflections or lighting from the sky can come in nicely here. What we'll do is we'll do some blurring on these so that, you know, you can have, like I said, uh, a glossy or a reflect, like reflective to glossy to diffuse. The lighting will work kind of nicely there and it'll all be fine, right? But the real problem is what do we do to fill in in here? So basically what that's for is not the ground and not the sky, but the, the near field, the light that's kind of coming from right around an object. And we won't really be able, I don't think, to do much in the way of reflections for that. I just don't think that's going to be super practical. Um, but we can, I think, like what I'm going to try and do is get just, just general lighting. Right, so get some, some uh, you know, get, get sort of blobby lights in there that are roughly correct um, so that it's still, so that lighting kind of works properly, but like pure reflections, we, we can't do. I'm pretty sure that's not really possible. Um, 
for a number of reasons, the most obvious being that we don't even actually have the data that we would need to know even if we did it perfectly. Like, for example, we don't even know, like we, the artist has not necessarily even drawn stuff like the back part of a house. So if you're behind the house, if you put a ball to the left and behind the house, it doesn't even know what to reflect, right? So we'd end up with all kinds of problems if we were trying to actually reflect the near field stuff. Um, so that probably won't happen, but uh, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to get some of the other things uh, in there. And uh, TTBJM, in terms of Fresnel, uh, we could actually put real lighting terms in here if we want to. I think they may not make a whole lot of sense because since we're kind of doing interpretive 2D lighting, I don't know, uh, but it would go in here, right? Um, when we actually are trying to determine uh, how the reflection falls off based on the uh, based on the angle and stuff like that. Uh, we would need to sort of just just figure out what we wanted our terms to be in here. I don't know how much we want to do of that though. Uh, so, like I said, we'll we'll play with some tuning, uh, but uh, I I don't think we want to go down the rat hole of trying to do any kind of physically based lighting really because we don't have the correct incoming light field. So pursuing physically based lighting is kind of just a waste of time. What we want to be pursuing is artistically pleasant lighting. So we, we're trying to figure out how to take the light fields we can generate in a 2D game and put them together to make pleasing effects. Uh, and so we will probably play with some lighting model computations here, but they're probably not going to have a lot to do with actual physics uh, like, um, you know, like for now. So anyway, let's wrap it up for today so everyone can go out and party hard on Friday night, um, as I know they are want to do. Thank you, everyone, for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure programming with you, as always. Uh, if you would like to follow along at home with the series, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org. We've got a little pre-order button just for you, um, and that comes with a source code so you can follow along and play around with it, which is a good way to learn. You just experiment with some stuff and see how it works uh, is a great way to learn from the series. We also have a Patreon page if you just want to support the video series because you are feeling uh, like a very nice person. Or uh, if you want to ask questions and look at ports to Mac or Linux, that sort of stuff, we've got a forum site you can check out. It's pretty cool. And we also have a Twitter page. And uh, the Twitter page has the schedule posted and it also tweets uh, updates to the schedule. So that's a great place to go if you're trying to catch the stream live, the tweet bot. Uh, can totally help you with that. That's it for uh, this week. We will be back here on Monday. Again, check the tweet bot for the schedule. We'll be back here on Monday, and uh, it'll be time to really go through and clean up our coordinate system stuff, which is going to feel really nice, I think, uh, when we go through there, because there will be no more hand-wavy unknown stuff that we haven't solidified. So that's going to be pretty nice. I hope you'll join me for that, and uh, have a great weekend in the meantime. Take it easy, everyone.